Well, hello and welcome to another Faith, Philosophy and Life with me, Mr. Shelton. It's great to see you again, and I do hope that you're doing well. A few weeks back, uh, a pupil came up to me and made a comment that I was their favourite YouTuber, which concerned me a great deal because there are far more interesting people out there for you to spend your time. However, it did make me think about social media influencers and why, just why do they exist and how? And how can I get involved? And I wondered who we followed on social media. I wondered what makes us want to follow them. I thought, how do they influence us? How, what do we look up to them? And what qualities do you see that they have in their lives that we want in ours? So my son really likes to follow Stampy. Uh, those of you that play Minecraft will know who I am talking about. Stampy Longcroft never heard of the bloke until my son got involved. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to think now about these questions on the screen. You don't have to write anything down, but who do you follow on social media and how do they influence you? And while you think about that, here's our cheesy intro sequence. Great. Okay, so what I would like you to do is grab your pen and your paper because that's our title. What is discipleship? What is discipleship? And today we're going to explore how the 12 disciples demonstrate belonging. It's going to be a good outcome if you can retell two facts about who, the disciples. Uh, great if you can explain why Jesus wanted people to support him in his ministry. And even better if you can explain who you think would be most helpful in a, a new cause and why. During today's session then we're going to think about influencers, we're going to think about friends and we're going to do a bit of research as well about the disciples. So I want you to think about this question as well. What qualities do you look in someone who you follow? Do you look for their talent? Is it their looks? Is it their personality? Their popularity? Outlook on life or inspiration? Okay, so pause me now while you get some notes written down about what is it that you look for if you want to be a follower of someone? Okay, so I wonder what it feels then to be chosen. I wonder if we've ever been selected for something. And I wonder what the role of the apprentice is. Now, I have a clip from a little bit of an older film now. It's called The Sorceress Apprentice, made by Disney. Amazing Nicolas Cage in this film. I'm going to play this trailer to you, and I want you, while you're watching this, to be thinking, what does it feel like to be chosen? Have you ever been selected for something? And what's the role of the apprentice? So have a look now. Let's watch this together. What you just did is impossible. I have been 
been searching all over the world for you. You are going to be a force for good and a very important sorcerer. But for now, you're my apprentice. I'm a what? Step inside, you leave everything else behind. Once you enter, there is no going back. Sweet. Let's go. There's more to learn. Okay, so I wonder if you've ever been chosen or selected for something. I wonder if someone's ever called you out. You know, in a sports team, is there sort of the classic example where people call up those people at the start they really, really want? I was always left till the very end. Um, those of you who know me know quite how artistic and sporty I actually am not. Um, but there are times that we all have our own talents and our own gifts, and we are chosen for who we are not necessarily just because of what we do. An apprentice is someone who learns from a master. And the disciples really were kind of apprentices. They learnt from Jesus. So, um, I wonder how many disciples you can name. So, let's see if you can list them. There are 12, maybe 14. We talked about this last time. And then come back to me. Okay, I wonder how many you got. Probably only two or three, if you're anything like my memory. But what I have got is I've got a clip from Get Questions Ministries, and we're going to watch this together. So let's watch this now. Today's question is, who were the 12 disciples or apostles of Jesus Christ? In this video, I'll answer that question from a biblical perspective. And afterwards, as always, I'll share some helpful resources, so stick around until the end. The word disciple refers to a learner or follower. The word apostle means one who is sent out. While Jesus was on earth, his 12 followers were called disciples. The 12 disciples followed Jesus, learned from him, and were trained by him. After his resurrection and ascension, Jesus sent the disciples out to be his witnesses. They were then referred to as the 12 apostles. However, even when Jesus was still on earth, the terms disciples and apostles were used somewhat interchangeably. The original 12 disciples or apostles are listed in Matthew chapter 10 verses 2 through 4. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon, the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. The Bible also lists the 12 disciples or apostles in Mark chapter 3 verses 16 through 19 and Luke chapter 6 verses 13 through 16. A comparison of the three passages shows a couple of minor differences in the names. It seems that Thaddeus was also known as Judas son of James in Luke chapter 6 verse 16 and Labaius in Matthew 10 verse 3. Simon the Zealot was also known as Simon the Canaanite in Mark chapter 3 verse 18. The Gospel of John uses the name Nathaniel instead of Bartholomew, but Nathaniel and Bartholomew were undoubtedly the same person. Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Jesus, was replaced in the Twelve Apostles by Matthias. See Acts chapter 1 verses 20 through 26. Some Bible teachers view Matthias as an invalid apostle and believe that Paul was God's choice to replace Judas Iscariot as the Twelfth Apostle. The Twelve Disciples or Apostles were ordinary men whom God used in an extraordinary manner. Among the twelve were fishermen, a tax collector, and a revolutionary. The Gospels record the constant failings, struggles, and doubts of these twelve men who followed Jesus Christ. After witnessing Jesus' resurrection and ascension into heaven, the Holy Spirit transformed the disciples or apostles into powerful men of God who turned the world upside down. What was the change? The twelve apostles or disciples had been with Jesus. May the same be said of us. 
Want to learn more? Subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Visit gotquestions.org for more great content and check out the details section below this video. There's one book I recommend along with several related articles. If you'd like to learn more about Bible Munch or if you're interested in bite-sized devotionals, subscribe to Bible Munch on YouTube. It's linked right here. Now remember, you got questions, the Bible has answers and will help you find them. Okay, hopefully that's helped you understand a little bit about discipleship. So, my next question is this. If you wanted to get a message out around the world, who would you get to promote it? If you wanted to get a message out around the world, who would you get to promote it? So, pause me now while you make a few notes, maybe write a few sentences about why you would choose this person that you've so chosen as well. Okay, I'm guessing then that you've come up with someone who uh, is an influencer, someone who uh, is well known, very popular maybe, maybe somebody with a lot of power, maybe like the president of the USA or the Prime Minister of Great Britain, maybe the Queen, maybe you've gone for someone who is a film star. But there's lots of people you could choose to get a message out. But what's really weird is that Jesus went for 12 disciples, some of whom were fishermen and some of whom were tax collectors. A bit of a nonsense for trying to get a message out around the world. So we said this lesson that it would be good if we could retell two facts about the disciples. Well, we've started to think, but we haven't yet done a huge amount on that. And talk about why Jesus would want to support, use them to support him. So we're going to um, have a look now uh, in our description below. And you will find a top Trump's cards. And you'll also find some information about each of the disciples. And what I need you to do is I need you to create some top Trump's cards for the disciples using the information that you've got there. Um, this is going to take some time because there are 12 of them that we are looking at and this is, uh, give yourself 20 minutes or so and uh, see what you can come up with about each of those disciples. So pause me now then come back to me. Okay, so just before we get on to our final task then, um, we said it would be good if we could retell two facts about two of the disciples. Hopefully you've got that information now for all 12 of them. Great if you could explain why people wanted to support him. And that's the idea of um, someone to get that message out so as a supporter, as a sort of follower even. And even better, if you think he would be most helpful for a new cause. And that's the conversation we've had already. So... This is uh, our sort of final task, and I'm going to leave it here with this on the screen for you. Um, so, Jesus' mission was to be carried out with ordinary people. He chose people that could relate to those around him. I want you now to look at those and decide which disciple do you think would be most effective and why? Which disciple do you think would be most effective and why? So, I'm going to leave it there. Get it all written up, get it photographed, get it sent through to your teachers because we'd love to see your work, obviously. Thanks very much for your time. Take care of yourself, stay safe, wash hands, God bless you. I'll see you soon.